I've made over a million dollars from crypto. Here's my exact trading blueprint. Every step I take, everything I recommend, all for one goal, to safely make money trading crypto from zero to a million. Step one, tools make the trader. First thing I do, make sure I have all the tools that I need, have them all locked down. I need a tool to test rules, to set up indicators, to practice trades, to gain information, and to execute the trades that I see fit. Now, when it comes to tools, you have unlimited options, but here's what I and everyone at Finova Research uses on a daily basis. Tool number one is TradingView. The reason why I use this is it just has all the indicators I could ever need. It has replay mode for testing out ideas. It has paper trading, it has everything and more. And the paper trading thing, that'll come into play a little bit later. Tool number two is Blowfin. Based on my research, this is the current best exchange for US users to trade on. It's easy to use, it's very secure, it's reliable. They actually draw on a decentralized Merkle tree verification. It's kind of a complicated way of saying they can prove that my money is on the platform and in its reserves, not being invested you know, somewhere else until the platform goes bust. Step number two, dodge the early mistake. So once I'm on TradingView and Blowfin and I'm looking at charts, I'm like anyone. I start feeling anxious to trade. I wanna get that big win. I wanna make a thousand bucks. Whatever my goal is, I just want that right now. I have the kind of psychology that just wants to take action and just wants to do something. I have a hard time just sitting and being patient but I've realized that about myself. This is where I pump the brakes. This is where I take a step back because if I make the early mistake here, everything's gonna go wrong later. The mistake is this, playing with too much money too soon. Don't go all in. In fact, it might be a little controversial, do the exact opposite. Trade with an amount that is so small that it's nearly meaningless for you. Seriously, so I'd fund my account with like $100 or less to get started. That's my whole portfolio, 100 bucks. This sounds small, especially if you wanna grow this thing to a million bucks, but this ties into the later parts of this blueprint. It is extremely important, start small, don't lose everything, don't bet everything. For now, just know that you wanna start with an amount you can afford to lose right now, like the price of a meal, basically. Not just for financial safety, but because this is going to help you control your mind over time as you trade. As you'll see later in this video, your mind is the most important thing about all of this. The people who don't learn how to control their minds never make any real money trading. So start laughably small. Now, step three. The red pill or the blue pill? In crypto trading, it appears as if you have thousands of options, thousands of different cryptos you can buy and schemes that you can invest into. This is kind of a lie. In trading, you have two options. You have high liquidity and you have low liquidity. High liquidity means the crypto can be traded a lot with a little impact on the price. So if you go in there with your $100 and you make a trade, you're not even gonna see it on the charts. And low liquidity means the reverse. More price movements, more volatility, more impact on the price for every individual trade. So with these options, I'm going with high liquidity. I'm doing this because it's more stable and more predictable. Now, this brings us to the next question. Which high liquidity crypto should we trade? The simple answer is Bitcoin. Why? Because it's solid, it's stable, Millions of people trade this thing, and it can be understood through indicators that I'm gonna discuss right now. Step four, track your big three. So next, I'd head over to TradingView. I'm gonna look at Bitcoin on the one hour chart and set up three indicators, the Bollinger Band, 500 EMA, and the Money Flow Index. I'll give you a better look exactly how those work later in this video, but they effectively do this. They help me see when the market is overbought or oversold, and allow me to see when reliable trades might be occurring. They're indicating us when a reliable trade might be occurring. So for example, when the price moves above the bands, it can be assigned to enter a short. When it moves below, that could be assigned to enter a long. A short is betting that the price will go down. A long is betting that the price will go up. The goal of all of this is to execute trades that have the highest possible likelihood of success with the lowest possible risk. Indicators like this, as well as any other steps in this blueprint, help make this a reality. So those three indicators, Bollinger Band, 500 EMA, and the Money Flow Index are the most recommended indicators by my head of research at Finova, Kyle. Kyle is a genius at trading, and he used strategies like this to turn a portfolio of $26 into $2.8 million only through trading crypto. Seriously. The, the, the percent return, I can't even do the math on that. It's insane. He shares his trades in real time. He explains his thought process and how to copy his results. He's helped members get wins like this, this, and this. Here's a recent result that stood out to me. It's insane. However, it only works if you establish your plan and you stick to it. And you can develop this plan yourself. 
You can do this for free. You can sign up for some site that gives you additional strategies and make things quicker, but there are unlimited ways to make money doing this. So let's flesh out the rest of your plan. Step five, hit the 100. Let me ask you a question. Before a boxer takes a fight, how many times do you think he's gonna practice? Probably hundreds of times. Before a pianist performs in front of a crowd, how many times do you think she'll practice? Again, probably hundreds of times. Yet most traders, they just start trading real money with zero experience. How well do you think that's going to work? Probably not well. Yeah, it's kind of dumb. So in this blueprint, I'm a brand new trader. I have my indicators in place. Next step is using paper trades to test how effective my strategies and my indicators are. Paper trading is where I place trades and test rules without risking any real money. This allows me to see if I understand what I'm doing, see if what I'm doing is working, and see mathematically if what I'm doing is actually profitable. All of this can be done through TradingView, which allows me to simulate the market and test my indicators. At this point, I wanna try and pay attention to every test trade and learn at least one thing from every trade, whether it's a win or a loss. And now I'm gonna do a big, big ask from you. You want a paper trade at least 100 times before using any real money, because like the boxer, like the pianist, you wanna be prepared when you show up for the real thing. So my ask for you is to do at least 100 paper trades before you risk any real money. Then we can move on to the next step. Step six, lose the right way. If you follow the blueprint so far, you'll notice one important thing. Losses can easily wipe out any wins that you've got. Even if you've been on a multiple win streak, one bad idea, boom, you can lose everything. But why does this happen? Because losses are guaranteed in trading. Nobody has a perfect win rate. No one. Even Kyle, our trading genius, he has an 88% win rate. That means 12% of the time, he's wrong. The guy who seemingly always gets it right, he's wrong 12% of the time. So if occasional losses are an inherent quality of the system, we need a method to reduce the downside risk of that quality to the highest degree possible. That just makes sense to do. And so that's what we're gonna do. So let's state our goal for clarity on this. I want to capture wins, but I can't have those wins reset to zero by losses. How do we achieve that goal? Pretty simple. It's called a stop loss. Let's say you enter it in a trade at $10 and you think that's going to go to $11. In this case, you might set up a stop loss at $9.50. What this does is if the price goes down, your position will automatically sell at $9.50, meaning your downside risk here was only 50 cents, or in this case, a 5% loss. So you can see how this could massively be beneficial. If you identify an opportunity where your rules and your tools are telling you the price of some asset could increase 10%, should increase 10%, you can position yourself to capture that 10% gain while setting up a safety net where you don't have to lose much money if you're wrong. And it gets even better. Here's what the best traders do. They trade with a two to one risk reward ratio. This means I'm only ever at risk of losing $1 on an opportunity that is capable of making me $2. So let's go back to our example to make this as simple as possible. We have an asset currently priced at $10. Let's say all of our tools and rules say this price could or should go to $12, a 20% gain. At a two to one risk to reward ratio, this means I'm willing to risk 10% as a loss to make that 20% gain. So in this case, I might set my stop loss at $9 in order to participate in the opportunity to see the price hit $12. If I'm correct, I make a 20% gain. If I'm wrong, I lose 10%. Doing this simple strategy means losses will never totally wipe you out. Step seven, surf, don't hunt. Surfing is rough. You have your board, you have your skills, you found the right beach, but without the right waves, you're gonna get beaten back into the choppy seas or you're just gonna be sitting there like, there's no waves, this is, this is just flat. It's gonna look like this back here. In surfing, no matter how skilled you are, the sea really determines how good your surfing is going to be that day. This is what trading is like. You don't wanna hunt down trades. You wait, sometimes for days, sometimes longer. You patiently wait until all of your rules are met and then you enter in the trade. This patience is what separates the winners from the losers in trading. Winners wait for great trades. They practice patience. Losers get impatient. They violate their rules. They lose more often than they should or have to lose. So here's what I'm gonna do. Surf, not hunt. 
I'm going to wait. And I'm only gonna make trades that my rules tell me are most likely to be winners. So by now, we've been paper trading. We've been doing this for a while. We have 100 trades under our belt. But here's the crazy thing. If I have a 40% win rate or higher at that two to one risk to reward ratio, then I'll be profitable. Seriously, you can make money even if you're wrong more than half the time. Now, of course, your win rate should be higher, like closer to 70% plus, but anything above 40% is acceptable. And I'm over 40%, this means I can graduate to the real thing. Step eight, beat the biggest obstacle. There's something that I realized recently that it kind of blew my mind. In any activity where the emotional element has a big influence on your ability to succeed in that thing, managing the emotional element becomes priority number one in that activity. If you have a fighter who can't manage his fear, he's gonna freeze up when he's in the ring. If you have a poker player who can't manage their frustration, they're gonna make irrational bets. They're gonna make bad hands. Unmanaged anxiety and greed, this is going to ruin a profitable trader. Because that is so crucial, that should be priority number one to manage the emotions. The second that I go from paper trading to real trading, I'm gonna notice something. Real trading is scary. I'm not playing with paper anymore. I'm trading real money that I actually care about, my money. This feeling is going to start influencing my decisions. It's going to change how I approach it. The bigger the amount of money that's at stake, the bigger the fear, the bigger the fear, the more influence on my decisions. This will make me violate my rules and lose money. All of a sudden I get dumb when real money is here. So here's what I do. Remember what I said with starting around $100? Well, a good reason for that is it means we're trading with a small amount each time. So for example, 1% of my $100 pot would be just $1. I'm not gonna get nervous about trading with $1, but maybe I will with $100. I probably will with $1,000, and I definitely would with $10,000. The more I trade with small amounts, growing over time, the more I learn to manage my emotions. I've been there before feeling these small amounts of fear and greed over time and then having wins, feeling that fear and then overcoming it, feeling that greed and then overcoming it, that builds up confidence and skills and allows me to control myself so I can stick to my rules before I ever scale up. That way when I do scale up, the rules and the confidence is just solidified. It's there, it's ready. Then we can move on to step number nine crush everyone with fundamentals. As I'm trading small, I'm learning to manage my emotions, I'm collecting wins, I'm gonna try to do something that 99% of traders don't do. I'm gonna learn and master the fundamentals. This will set anyone apart from the 99% of traders and make them considerably more money than everyone else because most people are just so impatient. They don't wanna do the work. If they have a win, they think they're a genius. It's always the obvious stuff. They just don't care about practicing in fundamentals. So eventually they fail or their track record slides. Instead, I'm going to try to continually test and improve my rules, to always set safe stop losses and practice risk management. That is so important, practice your risk management. I'm gonna wait for rule approved trades only. And I'm only gonna trade amounts that I know I can emotionally handle. The last one, it's actually pretty easy because you'll feel whether you can handle it or not. You just have to be honest with yourself. All of this, you have to be extremely honest with yourself. The longer I practice these fundamentals, the more they will positively impact and compound my results over time. Step 10, practice makes perfect. This one's simple. I take everything I've done so far and do it every day for at least an hour. Trading is a skill that you need to practice, either through trading in real life, paper trading, learning new tools and strategies, or a mix of all of these all at once. If you want it, you have to do it every day for at least an hour, so I'll do that. Step 11, do the most boring, but the most important part. From the beginning of this blueprint until now, I've been using tools, indicators, paper trades, real trades, all to gather information. What strategies work? What time do they work? How do I feel when I do them? What influences a positive and negative outcome? All this information helps me learn the most important part of trading, knowing when, why, and how I'm most likely to be profitable on the majority of my trades. If, for example, my data tells me that I'm more likely to be profitable between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. on Thursdays, then that's when I'm gonna trade. I'll focus on that time window. If my data tells me that I'm far more likely to make an unprofitable trade on days when I had bad sleep, guess what? I'm not trading on days when I have bad sleep anymore. You have to use the data to benefit you. 
you can see how valuable that this information is. But to get it, I have to do something that's incredibly boring. I need to keep a journal of every trade I make, the time, the date, the amount, the entry, the exit points, the strategy, how I felt, and any other relevant details. It's gonna be boring. I don't want a journal, but it will make me more profitable. So I'll do it. Step 12, the super secret part. This is the part that is glaringly obvious, but pretty much no one will do it because the sad truth is most of you watching, you're just not gonna do this, but here it is. The secret to the entire blueprint. I would repeat the practice steps of this entire blueprint over and over again, compounding until I've made 10K, 100K, 500K, and eventually a million bucks. This is gonna take time, persistence, it's gonna take effort, but with good risk management and consistent learning, it will work. Whether this happens or not is totally up to you at this point. I truly hope this was helpful. If you want a detailed look at how the Bollinger Band strategy works and how you can start making money with that strategy today, check out this video on screen.